Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my RPG series. In this episode, we are going to continue to enhance how our attribute system works. We're going to be adding some of the functionality that were added to our property system with the gameplay tags and add some listeners to our attributes. So let's get to doing that. We open up our attributes and our attribute component. And similarly to how we created a uh, listener for our properties, we want to have a uh, an event dispatcher interface that is similar between the, all the different attributes so that we can easily add listeners to it. So starting off, let's add the actual attribute listener. We'll call it add attributes listener so it's super clear what it is doing and what it is for. Like so. And again, we're going to be using the same model as we did before. So we're just going to be have, having one input here, which is going to be a gameplay tag. And we'll call it uh, attribute tag. And from here we have our macro, which we can use to determine what this tag actually is. And in this case, we have only set up for health so far. So here we're going to be adding a health uh, callback or event dispatcher. So let's create the dispatcher. We'll call this one attribute health changed. Like so. Compile and save. And to make it easier again, uh, moving forward, if we do any changes, we're going to be creating a structure for this. So we'll go down here and create a structure, which we will call uh, on blueprints and structure. We we'll call it s underscore attribute uh, context. Like so opening up attribute context, we can now add the variables that we need. So one of the things we might be needing is the actual attribute stats. So s attributes. Now this structure, which we will call the attribute changed will then be represented by our actual values so the base value delta multiplier and max over here however that will be representing whatever values we have after this change has been done and in some cases you may want to know what has been changed or in what quantity so we can add a float and say that uh, value change will be however much a value has been changed for for this and it doesn't want me to rename it we'll do it like this there we go so in this case you could keep track of if you have like gotten a positive heal or negative damage or something like that and uh, react to it in some way if you wanted to in addition to that we also may want to know uh, where this change was coming from. So we can add the origin uh, structure as well. And we'll just call that origin. So closing that down and going back to our attributes, we can now uh, get our uh, attribute health changed event dispatcher and say that we want to add our S attribute context. That's not where I want to click. <laughs> Okay, here, s attribute context. And we'll name it uh, attribute context. Like so. And like before, to make this easy for us for future event dispatchers, we can just drag it out like so, bind, create an event, call it signature. So it's very clear what we're having it for. Like so. So this means that we have an, uh, an event dispatcher we can now make use of, and we only have one place where we actually change our attributes, and that is in the change attribute function. So after we have changed an attribute, like in this case here, we have changed to the health, that is when we would be calling on, on our event dispatcher for health being changed, like so. However, 
you see that we have an attribute context here now that we need to fill. And if we were to drag out from this and make context, you can see that we get this. And this in turn consists of two different uh, structures themselves. So what I would like to do, and you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to, of course, but I would like to encapsulate a function just to have like where we can create an attribute context to send in here and have it as a middle point in between here. So that's what I will be doing. So I'll be creating a function which I will call create attribute context. That's not at all how you spell attribute. Attribute context, like so. And our attribute context will of course be returning uh, attribute context type, which I got there automatically, thankfully. We'll call it context. And in here we can just now drag out, uh, create a make structure and say we want to have an attribute in here, we want to have a value sent in here, we want to have an origin sent in here, and now this is essentially all that this has. So it doesn't really do a whole lot, but I just feels it, it encapsulates it a little bit prettier. And going back now to our change attribute, we can now call on our uh, create attribute context, like so. Pick it up and funnel our result into the event dispatcher. However, we need to populate these uh, from somewhere, so it will still be a little bit messier. Uh, again, th this is just my preference of how I like to, to do it. You can do it, uh, put, put the make structure out here yourself if you want to. But uh, we know the value change, so we can get the value change. It's an input parameter for this function, so we'll just hook that up. When it comes to the health, that is actually going to be our attribute that we have changed. So that's what we will be sending in there. And upon, when it comes to the origin, we don't actually have that right now. So we'll just hook it up over here and disconnect it. And then we'll type in get origin. And we can now send in that one as well, like so. Now we have a few functions here, not too many, but we might still want to like clean this up a little bit because we know that some of these are meant to be called from outside from other classes and some are not. So like for example, the change val attribute value here, we changed it to be a private specifier. This one we can go here and change the category to be sort of like private, which means that it will now get grouped into a category over here, which makes it a little bit cleaner if you want to hide the private stuff that's not the interesting or the public stuff or such things. Uh, equally, the attribute context that I just created also was meant to only be used in, in this function. So we will type it in to be in the same category group and we'll make it private. And just to make everything else more uh, transparent and then we'll make all the other ones of the type public. And also remember that if you want to change, you don't actually have to type in the category all the time. If you have created a category like private or public, it now exists in the drop down here. So you can just choose it public like so. And this way we now have our functions a little bit more organized like this, which helps sometimes when it comes to uh, getting an overview of, of how something is built. Let's go back to our add attribute listener because we didn't actually finish that one off. So in here now we will allow for the actual binding of the events to the different attributes that you're after. So in this case we have our health. We will choose not call. That's the wrong one. Drag off and we'll do a bind. And we'll drag off like so. And we'll hook up the event node like so. So this is where we will be adding our events later on for uh, listening to our different attributes then. So that's why we need to have a unison uh, signature, just like we spoke about in the properties. So uh, with that in place, let's actually go and check if this works now. I think it would be a good time. So we'll go here to our third person character. We will open it up. 
And we already have our function from before here when we're doing the number six key where we're pressing a button and we're changing an attribute. So let's add another key, keyboard seven. And let's get our BPC attributes. So let's say we add listener. So we get an attribute listener. We say we want to listen to our health attribute if it gets changed. And if it does, we want to call on this event, which we will just call uh, attribute changed for now. And the only thing that that one will do is just print out the string to verify that it has registered that uh, something has been changed. So in this case, we have health only, so we can say that health has changed. So the important part here now is, of course, that if we start playing, we need to make sure that we press our seven key first to bind the event. Then after that, we press six to change our health. Then we see that health has changed up here on the screen. So that's working good and fine so far. Now, as a final thing in this video, we will be doing something uh, regarding to the attributes. So the attributes have these, and we said that this was going to be like a calculation for this. So um, this calculation will be possible that other classes may want to do at some point. So we don't want to store this calculation in our attributes because we may not be doing it somewhere where we have access to a component with attributes. So we'll create another uh, folder. We will call this one function library. So here we will create a blueprint function library. So we've got the blueprints, blueprint function library. We'll call it BPFL for blueprint function library. And since this is going to help us with uh, some calculations related to attributes, we'll call it attribute helper. Going in here, we will create a function which we will be calling, let's say, calculate attribute value, maybe. Compile, save. And as input here, we will be getting one of these attribute structures. So s underscore attributes. We'll call this one just attributes. And we want to return a calculated value from this. So we'll add a float, which will be our calculated value. So we'll call it attribute value. Now, some of these values may make, or some of these stats may make more sense for others than uh, for different parts or di different types of stats, I suppose. Um, Having a delta might make sense for something like hit points. Having a multiplier and hit points might not make as much sense. Having something like strength might have both delta and a multiplier and such things. And some values may, you may want to cap with a max and some you don't and stuff like that. So uh, it's a little bit up to you how you want to do this calculation essentially. But what I was thinking here is we will we'll do a math expression. And the reason for this is it will become both more uh, tidy and it will become more clear of what you're actually trying to do. But the essential calculation here we want to do is essentially base value and we want to add our delta value and whatever that becomes we want to add our multiplier to. And this just presents us the nodes that we need to put in. So now we have a base value we send in, delta we send in, multiplier that we send in. And this value here now we could potentially cap between zero or a max value and the max value or something like that if you wanted to. In this case, I'm going to opt to not to do that, but this would be an opportunity to do that if you wanted to. It's a little bit about uh, preference of how you want to make use of the different values, I suppose. So now we have a function that we can make use of at later dates when it comes to actually getting a, a value calculated from a specific structure that we have at hand. So yeah, I think that is where we will be leaving off this episode for today. I hope to see you in the next one. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.